some of you know, I have done a lot of short movies containing time lapses, made both with regular cameras and with drones. Some of them are actually quite good. I also made plenty of tutorials about time lapses and hyperlapses. Of course, I get a lot of feedback from viewers. And the question I get asked the most is, how can I get the correct amount of motion blur? A couple of years ago, I made a tutorial about motion blur in time lapses. But in the meantime, I have acquired a lot of experience about tutorials, especially on how to go straight to the point. I have also experimented a lot in time lapses and hyperlapses. So I thought it was time for a much improved tutorial on this very important topic. So, Let's get going. In regular video, there is a general rule adopted across the industry called the 180 degrees rule. It consists in using a shutter speed of half the frame rate of the project. Since I use a frame rate of 24 frames per second, the optimal shutter speed to use in video according to this rule is 1 50th of a second or thereabout. This is in order to mimic what we see in real life with our eyes by allowing a certain amount of motion blur in each frame. If we were to use a faster shutter speed and freeze every single frame, the resulting footage would look jumpy, staccato, a bit unnatural. But in video the effect is quite subtle and it might not be noticed by the untrained eye. On the other hand, in time lapses, the effect of motion blur is much more dramatic, and the correct amount makes or breaks the final result. In time lapses, we can choose the interval between each shot, which practically corresponds to the frame rate. In hyperlapses, where the point of view moves very fast, I like to use a frequency of one shot every second. Although very fast memory cards are needed in order to buffer the images in a very short amount of time. In situations where there are things moving around like cars, boats or people, I set the frequency to 2, 3 or 4 seconds according to the speed I want to get. In landscapes where most of the movement is in the clouds, I would use a frequency of 3 to 5 seconds. For sunset or sunrise with day to night transitions, 4 to 8 seconds. And finally, in the case of flower blooming, a shot every few minutes. And in the case of constructions of buildings, even one shot per day. By extrapolating the 180 degree rule, to get the most natural movement time lapses, it is best to use a shutter speed of 1 second for a frequency of a shot every 2 seconds. 1 second and a half for a frequency of 3 seconds. Shutter speed of 2 seconds for a frequency of 4 seconds, and so on. The step lapse was shot with an image every 2 seconds and the correct shutter speed of 1 second. As you can see, the movement is perfectly smooth and each image contains a good amount of motion blur. Let's see now how it would look with faster shutter speeds, therefore with a reduced amount of motion blur. As you can see, the faster the shutter speed, the more the image looks jumpy and not natural, while the amount of motion blur decreases. Ouch! This is almost painful to watch. In a perfect world, there would be plenty of motion blur for everybody. But life is not always fair, so there are situations when the perfect ideal long shutter speed is simply not achievable. When using telephoto lenses, especially in windy conditions, the camera shake can generate what I call dead frames, which completely ruin the final result. The solution is to go for a faster shutter speed, 1 4th or 1 6th of a second, 
and find a compromise between achieving a perfect motion blur and avoiding dead frames from camera shake. Other similar situations are wobbly surfaces like a bridge with car passing by or wooden platform with people walking around. When taking drone lapses, the stability of a drone hovering is obviously not the same as the one of a camera sitting on a sturdy tripod. I find that the best results in time lapse with a drone are achieved with a shutter speed between one fifth to one tenth of a second, according to the conditions. When shooting a time lapse in the middle of the day, it is not possible to use the slow shutter speed needed even after setting ISO and aperture to the minimum values. This is why ND filters are the main tool for time lapses. ND filters are like sunglasses for the camera. They reduce the amount of light entering the sensor, thus allowing to dial the specific shutter speed or aperture needed. They come in different variations of strength, so which one should you buy? I use an Icon D850, a DSLR with a very wide latitude of usable ISO. So for me, a single filter is enough, either an ND200 or 400. For cameras with less latitude, two different filters might be needed. In this case, a ND64 and an ND400 should do the job. There are also on the market some models of variable ND filters, but they are generally meant for video, where only a portion of the sensor is used. For photography, they generally produce very strong vignetting. I never had any luck with them for photography. Sometimes people ask about another technique, often mistakenly taken for time lapses. Accelerated videos. They are basically a regular video, sped up in post-production, to look like something remotely like time lapses. I call them lazy time lapses. There are several issues with this technique. First of all, video footage has generally very strong compression, unless using extremely expensive cameras. So the latitude for color grading is very limited compared to RAW photos. The final result is therefore of inferior quality. Also with RAW photos there is much more dynamic range and resolution, which allows for cropping, rotating, zooming in and so on. Furthermore, when the footage is sped up, there is practically no motion blur. The result is very jumpy, with a really strong staccato effect. Practically like a time lapse taken without any filter, therefore with the wrong shutter speed. There are several ways to fake motion blur in post production, but the results are always really poor compared to motion blur in camera. Uh, don't get me wrong, these accelerated videos are useful in certain situations for uh, speed ramping, but they simply should not be called time lapses. Rock and roll! If you watch this video this far, Motion Blur has no more secrets for you anymore. If you like this video, smash the like button underneath and subscribe to my channel. We have plenty of fun around here. Bye for now.